All right, so you can't see me. I just realized my camera's not working. Um, I'm gonna spend two seconds working on this. And sometimes my camera just does not work. There we go, sweet. <clears throat> okay, so today, um, well, yesterday I was working on upgrading PayPal scripts to Babel 7. Just mostly experimenting, wanted to see how hard it was. Turned out um, it's not that hard. There are some kind of rough edges uh, here and there with the way that I'm doing things, but it was not like a terrible experience. So uh, there, there is a bit of a change with how uh, Babel works, in particular with the configuration. Uh, most of the changes involve <clears throat> um, changes in how the packages are published and distributed and and things uh, now everything's at babel slash instead of babel dash <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah for the most part it was it was pretty easy there is a um, migration upgrade to babel 7 um, that I followed along and it was pretty straightforward um, yeah it didn't take a whole lot of time so it was pretty cool but there's one pretty significant change um, that applies to at least the way that I use Babel uh, with PayPal scripts, and that is in the configuration and specifically in this new configuration uh, option called babel.config.js. We'll look into that a little bit. Uh, so before, uh, with Babel 6, there were um, two ways that you could configure Babel, with this .babelrc file, and um, with a Babel property in your package JSON. And um, the way that Babel worked is it would look for the closest configuration to the file that it's transpiling and use that configuration. And I'm pretty sure it actually would merge the configuration. So if we had a Babel RC at the root and then we put another Babel RC in here, it's gonna merge the configuration. I think that's how it worked. Uh, that's how it works with the ESLint anyway. Um, so things have slightly changed with Babel 7 in particular with the uh, babel.config file. And so I wanted to look into that a little bit and just mostly exploring for my own um, understanding here. So um, yeah, let's take a look at what is um, happening here. So I have all the different configuration options just prefixed with off dash so I can enable them. I also have um, this copy to node module. So after I npm install, uh, this will be copied over to node module. So we can see what um, how Babel interacts with your packages um, that have Babel configuration as well. And so here, actually, I need to I'm gonna turn that. Um, oops, we're gonna modify this to off and off and off now this one is actually i haven't verified what happens with these um so we'll we'll experience that together um but yeah let's just start off with um i've, I've got a webpack config here because that's normally how most people are using babel they're using it with webpack um unless you're doing something on node um, in which case things are slightly uh, simpler. But with uh, Webpack, I am uh, using this index as my uh, default or my entry. Uh, that's just the default in Webpack. And I'm importing greeting from local test. And then if I go into local test index.js, um, then that is just export const greeting hello world as an arrow function. And the way that I have the um, things configured um, in the package in node modules, it's configured to transform block scoping. So the const variable should be uh, transpiled. And in the project, um, we have the arrow functions uh, configured. So it should transpile uh, the arrow function, but leave the const alone and um, yeah, and we'll see what it does to our node modules here. Um, okay, cool. So let's take a look at what this does. Uh, and, and you'll notice that here in my module rules, I'm saying all JavaScript files. So I'm including files in the node modules and that um, that is relevant. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and run um, Webpack. So I don't have Webpack installed globally. I, I did this thing. I've got a YouTube video about how I set it up so it'll uh, reference my node modules. But you can find it at a comment or something. 
Um, but in any case, uh, that ran pretty fast. Thank you, Webpack4. I open up my main file here. And here we've got all the um, Webpack um, boilerplate at the top. And then we've got our um, hello world from our node module file. And so, yeah, that's it wasn't transpiled at all. It makes sense. We don't have any Babel configuration set up anyway. And then our source module was also not transpiled at all. We still have the const and the arrow function. And so that's just our, our base. So let's start enabling some of these different configs. The first one I'm going to enable is the package.json here. So then we'll run Webpack again. And should have kept that main open. No. Okay. So now with the package.json uh, configuration enabled, the function was transpiled, const was not transpiled, that's not included in our project um, uh, settings or configuration. And then um, this was not transpiled either. So the node modules is untouched, even though here we're saying we wanna run um, all of our JavaScript files through the Babel loader, it's actually not going to be touching files that are coming from node modules. And that's default Babel behavior. Um, and quite honestly, I'm not sure how to force Babel to, uh, to do that. I'm sure, pretty sure there's like probably an option or something. We're going to look at another way to, to do that. So I'm going to turn that back off and we'll switch to, um, the old Babel RC, remove that off there and run webpack again. And it ran and, uh, same story here and actually the same story here. So nothing changes. Those are functionally equivalent to as far as how uh, things are uh, run with a pack. So either the package.json um, or the uh, .babelrc, they are the same. Um, and yeah, and they're static as well. So they're like very much the same. Okay, so we turn that one off and let's um, do this one. So this is new in Babel 7. Um, now we can have uh, some dynamic capabilities because this is a JavaScript file. So we can use um, uh, environment variables and all kinds of things uh, right here in our babelrc.js file. And with that enabled, we'll uh, run webpack again and uh, nothing's changed. So our um, node module was not touched even, uh, well, yeah, and we'll, we'll get into its own config later. Um, but our source file was uh, transpiled. It didn't transpile the const, transpiled the arrow function. Okay, so that is with the Babel RCJS. So if you were to ask me, I think in normal projects, this is what I will use, um, just a Babel RC.js, um, because it's dy it enables dynamic capabilities, um, but it also, um, has the semantics that we're used to from um, times past. So things are gonna change now. I'm gonna, whoops, do. Okay, we're gonna turn this one off. And then I'm going to come here and turn on the Babel config. So now I'm gonna run Webpack again. And this is where things change. So we're still transpiling the function, we're not transpiling const. And then in here, we are transpiling the function now. So uh, that is the big whoop around the Babel config um, file. So babel.config.js, it's dynamic and it also will transpile your node modules for you. So uh, this could be a good thing and a bad thing um, because yeah, that I, I'm not so sure I love the idea of transpiling your node modules. Um, it's probably good. I think that Create React app will actually default to transpiling your node modules. Um, and so I, it's, pro it's probably a good thing. It probably is. It allows you to transpile down to the least common denominator for your browser. Uh, so things will run faster or for, for the browsers that you support. So things will run faster. I just worry that um, people are gonna go nuts over things and, and you're gonna have to look at, okay, what do I have to enable in Babel so I can use this library? That'd be kind of annoying. And so then we just pile on all kinds of things into our, our Babel configs and I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, it's probably a good thing. Um, so yeah, that is how the Babel config works. 
So let's go ahead and we'll turn this one off. And now we get to the stuff I haven't actually tested yet. But let's see. So if I if I run this again, we have no Babel configs enabled. We go here and nothing was transpiled here, nothing was transpiled here. Perfect. So let's go ahead and um, we'll start in the package JSON here by enable Babel and then run webpack. You'll notice that and nothing happens. So um, by default, um, Babel is still not going to transpile anything in the node modules, um, pretty much no matter what. Um, so, uh, on, well, that's not no matter what, unless you have a Babel config. So let's actually, let's modify this to just be Babel config. So now we know that Babel config is going to transpile our, our node modules. The question is, is it going to um, allow the um, Babel configuration that is inside of our packages? The answer is no, no. Uh, so it will still transpile the function because that's in our project Babel config, but it's not going to transpile the variables despite uh, that configuration existing in our um, Babel um, configuration here. So. Um, the Babel config, and in fact, I don't have a, um, an example for this, but the Babel, when you use Babel config, even if I have a dot Babel RC in the source directory here, it's still not going to allow that. So Babel config is like, I am the end all be all with regard to how this uh, Babel stuff is, is being configured. Any other Babel configuration anywhere is not going to work here. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to um, let's see, we'll disable this one and then come back here. I'll disable this and I just want to see, I'm guessing this won't work, but we'll change that to babel.config. I'll run webpack and I'm pretty sure it's just going to ignore it. Yeah. So there's no way, um, to have the local, as far as I can tell, there's no way to have the local configuration of a node module package um, be the um, thing that, or apply to your node modules code. Um, there, there might be a way to make that work with Webpack though. So let's, uh, let's just, hmm. um, yeah, there might be a way to make that work with Webpack. Um, you just have another, another rule and then configure the options separately. Um, yeah, that'd be something to look into more another time. Um, but if you definitely like, uh, so here we can enable transpiling our node modules by turning this back on. Um, so now it'll transpile our node modules. If you don't want it to do that, then you can actually uh, go to your webpack config here and add exclude node modules. And then we run webpack with that. And even though we have a Babel config, which will include node modules, uh, Webpack will never even run the node modules uh, files through Babel Loader, so they won't be transpiled. So if you want to um, do it that way too, so you can still have the Babel config that is like the end-all be-all for the whole project, but then have it ignore the um, the JavaScript that's in your node modules. So you got a bit of a flexibility there. Um, so anyway, this is a learning experience for me. Um, I hope that is helpful for you. And uh, yeah. I'm going to check out now. So hope you have a nice day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.